out of parole by legal right vested in it and with approval by the governor has granted you a parole. Now any violation will cause you to be brought back and serve the remaining six years of your term. You will report immediately to the place to which you have been paroled. And within 24 hours, you will report your arrival to the parole officer. Is that all clearly understood? Yes, sir. I had three years to memorize it. I couldn't forget it. Keeping all these rules won't give me much chance to prove my innocence. I'm afraid you can't get any sympathy on that point. In all my experience, I've never bumped into the case of convicting an innocent. I'm still waiting for the first one. If I get a fair break, you'll take back those words, Warden. My boy, nothing would give me greater pleasure. Good luck to you, Tyler. Thank you, sir. I'm looking for Mr. Bennett, the parole officer. That's me. Good morning, I'm Dave Tyler. Oh, I've been expecting. Sit down. Thanks. Well, Tyler, my first duty was to instruct you regarding your parole restrictions. You're not to change your residence or employment without my consent. You're not to associate with persons having a criminal record. You're not to use intoxicating liquor and particularly not to have in your possession any guns. You're not to marry without the permission of your parole officer. You'll report to me weekly, and I will visit your place of employment and residence when I see fit. Now, is that all clearly understood? I know all the rules backwards. For the next six years, no bad companions, no liquor, no guns, no late hours, no marriage. The question of marriage is not quite that severe. You are permitted to marry during your parole, provided we approve the lady and she's aware of your circumstances. That practically kills my chances with the right girl. Wouldn't it be rather humiliating to ask a lady to appear here for your approval? You'd be surprised what the right girl would do. I'll wait until I can prove I'm not guilty. Well, you might make some girl believe that. You have to carry this card with you at all times. It'll require your signature. In other words, I must carry a card to identify myself as a criminal. If you're picked up by the police, that'll prove you're legally out of prison. Yeah, and brands me as a suspect for every crime in the neighborhood. Try to get the bitterness out of your system, Tyler. You should be grateful to be on parole and have a job with a respectable man like Gregory Warren. Well, I am grateful to Mr. Warren and anyone else who believes in me. I need all the friends I can get to help me prove my innocence. Tyler, you've had your hearing in court. They passed judgment on your guilt. What you'd better do is pay strict attention to your parole conditions. Remember, you're not a free man. Your parole is another way of serving the remaining six years of your term. the landlady? Mrs. Magruder. So the sign outside, have you any vacancies? I got one room. Can I see it? Yes. I don't think you'll like it, but you can look at it. The last man that was here, he didn't like it. I don't know how you ever found this place. Well, if you don't expect too much, you won't be disappointed. It's got windows and a bed. What more does a person want than that? You're too modest, Mrs. Magruder. Well, it's got a floor. And walls. Curtains on the windows. Well, it's even got chairs with backs on them. And can you beat it? It's got a ceiling. Never mind the cracks. No, I won't, uh, as long as the rain doesn't come through them. Well, make up your mind. Do you want it? I'll make up my mind while you make up the bed. Uh. Say, uh, doesn't the sun ever come in here? Sun? Huh. Some people want the earth for three dollars a week. You want the sun. Okay, skip the sun. I'll get along without that. Look here, young man. You got references. No. Have you? Have you got a job? Starting a new one, reporting tomorrow. How are you on keeping jobs? Well, I was at the last one for over three years. 
just wouldn't let me go. Who are you working for? Gregory Warren and Company Investments. Uh, well, here's your key. I don't want to be bothered much for a measly three dollars a week. So if you want anything, don't call me. We ain't got it. Thanks. Uh, by the way, if uh, you want the rent right away, don't ask me. I haven't got it. I ain't surprised. Good to see you. Jeff, you don't know how grateful I am to you for helping me get paroled. Well, I've been scheming that article ever since your trial, but I couldn't print it till you were up for parole, see? You had it figured out to a T. Well, half a dozen people wrote in offering me jobs. Yeah? Which one they give you? A fellow by the name of Gregory Warren runs an investment company. Gregory Warren? Well, good. I know him. Hey, come on, sit down. Well, that job ought to be all right for you. It's up to me to make it all right. But they'll forget I'm a jailbird. Well, you watch your step and people forget in no time. And you forget it, too. I'll watch my step, and I'm not going to forget. Well, you will in time, Dave. Say, come on out to my place. Gee, it'll be like old times, us rooming together again. No, thanks, Step. I've got a place. But there's plenty of room. No. You've done enough already. I can't drag a mess of parole rules into your home. Why, they'd be questioning you all the time. I'm sort of an outcast, you know. Well, not with me. Thanks, Step. Say, uh, you <laughs> need a little cash? Uh, very little, but it's all yours, Dave. You know that. Ah, uh, get along. Thanks for believing I'm not guilty, Jeff. Well, what else could I do? Pal was in trouble and needed help. Then you think I am guilty. You've thought it right along. Yet you did all you could to help me out. Well, maybe I didn't give it much thought. But, Jeff, I tell you, I'm innocent. Dave, you had a good lawyer and a fair trial. And six witnesses swore they saw you drive away from that bank. But I wasn't anywhere near that bank. I didn't have anything to do with the robbery. Well, let's forget about it. Forget it? After three years up there? After three years of being herded around with a bunch of criminals and charged with a crime I didn't do? Well, I can't forget that. I tell you, I'm innocent. Every one of those six witnesses lied when they testified against me. Somebody framed me beautifully. Well, I'm sorry, Dave. I heard those witnesses, and they certainly convinced me. It'd help a lot if I thought you believed me, Jeff. Oh, gosh, I guess they even had me fooled. And you do believe me? Yes, Dave, I do, now. I don't know why I ever believed anything else. Thanks, Jeff. I needed that from you. Three years for something he didn't do. He'll be coming out of there with fire in his eye, looking for the guy that really pulled that bank job. That job was nicely tied to him for the rest of his life. Yeah, you hope. It's a good thing for you that six witnesses saw him running away from that robbery. Yeah, six witnesses. Made to your order. And they saved your hide by sending him to jail instead of you. Yeah, that was a nice hunk of dough you cleaned up when I took Tyler out of that football game. Oh, I'd like to get my hands on another setup like that. Is Mr. Warren in? He'll get on to us in a week and blow all our rackets wide open. Suppose he starts taking up those witnesses. In that case, I'll turn him over as a parole violator and he'll go back to state's prison for the other six years. Tyler. Not any longer. I'm Dave Tyler. Welcome, Dave Tyler. I'm glad to see you. I hope you'll always be able to say that. This is Mr. Russell. He's a close associate of mine, sort of silent partner. How do you do, Mr. Russell? How are you? Incidentally, Russell knows the circumstances of your being here. I was hoping the newspapers wouldn't blast that too much. Yes, I use my influence to pipe that down. Oh, well, that's a break. Yeah, I figured there'd be handicaps enough without that. Yeah, the parole board pile them on thick. I have to report on everything but my old razor blades. <laughs> Cigarette? No, thanks. Uh, Mr. Warren, 
I'd like to tell you how grateful I am for giving me this job. Why, not at all. I'm only repaying you for all you've done for me. I've always greatly admired your courage as a football player. Oh. Well, you're one of the few that remembered. <laughs> well, should we start things off with a little celebration? Would you like a drink? Uh, the parole board says thumbs down on that. Oh, that's a parole violation, isn't it? They're afraid you might stub your toe again. Mr. Warren, I never stubbed my toe in the first place. That charge against me was all wrong. I never robbed any bank. I'd like you to believe that. Well, it, it really doesn't make any difference to me. My interest is entirely in your football record. Now, this is for you, Mr. Warren. It's your little sister. Oh. Hello, Freckles. Enjoying your visit? Get you what? A doghouse? Oh, a dollhouse! No, no, I won't forget. I'll have the show for bite. And make sure you're ready. I want you home before dark. Yes, I'll see you at dinner. Yeah, I'll be waiting. Goodbye, Freckles. There's my kid sister. She's visiting up at Galeville. Well, gentlemen, we have important work to do. Someone has to buy a dollhouse. She wants the car to bring it up. I'll do the best I can. Not you. You're not cut out for that sort of work. Can you drive a car? That's what they said I was doing at that bank stick-up. Well, <clears throat> this will be your first job. You're to buy a dollhouse and drive to Galeville. Here's the address. Pick up my kid sister and drop her off at my house. And where's your house? She'll tell you, but don't let her tell you how to drive. Drive carefully and avoid accidents when you're with her. You realize I don't dare drive without a license. And in order to get that, I have to see my parole officer. Well, I'll have to meet your parole officer sooner or later. It may as well be now. Come on, let's go. I'll pick you up later. I'm looking for a freckles. I was supposed to give her this. Oh, let me see it. Well, that's just the kind I wanted. Did you buy it? Yes. Mr. Warren said it was for uh, freckles. That's right. I'm freckles. You freckles? Oh, I see. You expected to see a little girl. Naturally. He mentioned freckles and then wanting a dollhouse. Well, let's clear up the freckles right now. They disappeared a long time ago, but my brother never forgot them. And the dollhouse I wanted for a little girl who lives here. Oh, your car is here. And the dollhouse. My bag is just inside. What a beauty. Oh, Gloria will love that. Do me a favor, Elaine. Don't let her see it until her birthday. I won't. Goodbye, dear. I'll be looking for your visit this week. You let me know the day and I'll drive up for you. So would I if I had that good-looking driver. Never mind coming along. Just send him. Give my love to Greg. You bet I will. You're not a real chauffeur. That's right. How can you tell? Well, a regular chauffeur would have put the bag in front, where it belongs. Sorry, I'll change it. Uh, no, don't. It gets awfully lonesome in that back seat. It's just like being cooped up in a cage. Oh, uh, do you mind if I sit up in front with you? It's a lot more fun than being alone. I don't like being alone either, Miss Warren. I'll just slide through here. How long have you been working for my brother? Just started today. 
driving you is my first duty. Oh, so I'm a duty. Oh, I didn't mean it that way. As a matter of fact, I've enjoyed today. Greg's a grand person and very kind to me. You'll enjoy working for him. You've been very kind to me already. What's your name? Dave Tyler. Tyler. That name has a familiar sound. Oh, I was thinking of the famous football player. Are you in relation to him? No. No, no relation to Wiz Tyler. Oh, I'd almost forgotten what happened to him. Yeah, and we better get out of here. Your brother will wonder where we are, and I had orders to get you home in time for dinner. I'd like to keep my job. Well, we'll see that nothing happens to it. Hello, sugar. Why haven't I seen you before? I never miss a pretty girl, and you're a peach. Ah, oh, don't be like that. I'm easy to get acquainted with. You're talking out of turn, bud. Ah, uh, so what about it? Somebody might button up that lip of yours. Oh, you want to get tough, huh? All right, wise guy. Leave him alone. You might get arrested. That's right, Julie. And now you know what happens to bad boys when they get into fights. This kind of treatment's worth a black eye. Not always. Sometimes they lose their jobs, and sometimes they get put in jail. Sometimes just a black eye. Oh, certainly hung a butte on me. Hope I never run into him again. I forgot about him. Do you think we should have waited to find out what happened to him? Uh, no, no. That kind of thing can mean police and front page headlines. Do you mean they blame you for protecting me? Well, they might if uh, they know who did it. Uh, be safer not to say anything about it. You can count on me to keep it a secret. Say, I better get your brother's car back to him or he won't let me drive you anymore. You let me manage that. Hope it's tomorrow. Uh, my eye might need some more treatment. I'm your doctor. Fifteen grand there. Good, eh? Well, not good, but better. But that's the West Side payoff for only one week. The squawkers are coming across a lot better since we work on a few of them. Well, maybe you better work on a few over on the North Side. Sure. Good night, Greg. Freckles. Have a nice time, Delanes? Yes, and she sent you something. Oh, she did? Well, where is it? <laughs> she didn't say put it on my nose, did she? No, that was my idea. Well, Elaine should deliver her own kisses. She'd do better than that. From now on, I want it understood that you and Elaine are to do your visiting here. Did you miss me that much? You bet I did. Three days is too long a time without seeing you around the house, Freckles. I knew you were glad I was back. When these came, oh, they're beautiful, Greg. Why, well, you act as if getting flowers for me is something unusual. Well, I think it is unusual for a brother to be so kind. <laughs> oh, I forgot. I invited a few of your friends over tonight. Well, that was thoughtful of you. I hope I don't stay too late. I've got a big day tomorrow. Oh, you work so hard, Greg. Why do you do it? Well, it's a big secret, but I let you in on it. I want the greatest little sister to have everything she wants. And I have. Oh, Greg, no girl in the world could have a finer brother. That is a compliment. Remind me to have you say it again at the next meeting of our Mutual Admiration Society. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I'll go and dress for dinner. Before I knew what happened, he hung this on me. You better not let that parole officer get a look at it. I hope I can keep out of his sight till this gets healed. <laughs> you might not think your job calls for protecting beautiful damsels. Yeah, he could call it a parole violation. Uh, you know, you better tell Warren you want him to get someone else to drive his sister around. But that isn't true. That's what I thought. Whatever gave you that idea? Well, it's written all over you. You spent 15 minutes describing her. Say, is she really that lovely? Oh, so that's it. Well, let me give you a bit of advice. You better keep your fists in your pockets. Well, that gives a fellow a swell chance to protect a lady. Say, hey, listen, the fellow you want to protect right now is Dave Tyler, if you want to keep your freedom. Freedom? What kind of freedom have I got? A parole is just a tougher way to do a prison stretch. 
Every time I take a breath, I expect some cop to grab me. Well, sure, I know it's tough, but it'd be a lot worse back there where they heard you around with a gun. At least you have some liberty here. Yeah, just enough to make you want more. Then they dare you to take it. They may not have a gun stuck into me, but they might just as well have. I'm supposed to take it for six years, and then what am I? A guy with a crime record pinned onto him. Well, I'm not going to be branded for the rest of my life, not me. I'm going to find the fellow that pinned it onto me. Well, Dave, you must have some idea who it is. No, I haven't. For three years, I've been trying to figure out why they picked on me for the goat. Well, whoever it is, you can bet he's keeping his eye on you. And the minute you get too hot, he'll close in. He won't stop at anything. Neither will I. Okay. How do we start? You give me the names of the six people who testified against me. I'll dig them up one by one. Find out who pulled the strings. Well, I can get a list of them right here in the newspaper files. Say, and I remember one of those names. It was Jack Hollister. Come on. Lady, I'm trying to find Jack Hollister. You're trying to find him. I've been looking for him for two years. Have you any idea where he went? Yes, he went down to the corner to get some groceries one night, and a year later I got a postcard from China. A dope. Haven't you heard from him since? No, and I don't expect to. Know anything about a man named Paul Redding? He used to be a teller here, I believe. That's right. Friend of yours? Not exactly, but it's very important I find him. Know where he is? <laughs> I can't say, but uh, I have my suspicions. What do you mean? Well, he's been dead for six months. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, he played the ponies on the bank's money. You can guess it, Rez. Yeah. Well, thanks. Okay. So I keep on following him, and pretty soon he gets to the house where Jack Hollister used to live. From there, he starts looking for Paul Redding and lands at the bank where Redding worked. I told you he'd start doing that. He's trying to run down those witnesses. Well, that's two of them he won't find. Keep right on his heels. Don't let him out of your sight. I still think you're making a big mistake not letting me take care of Tyler, my way. Listen, I've told you before that Tyler is my personal property. I'll handle him my way, and you keep your nose out of it. Your way better not be too late. He's on a trail that can lead right up to us. That trail will lead him right back to state's prison, and this time he'll stay. Sorry, mister, but Hawkins moved to Europe or... Paris, uh, I forget which. How long ago? Right after the last election. Can't you give me his address? Say, I wish I knew it myself. He left here on me plenty of money. What do you want to see Mr. Orbison about? That's something I can't explain. He moved to San Francisco. Oh, out of the state. Yes, that's why he went. You know his address? No, that wouldn't do you any good. He changes his name with every new job. Thanks very much. Look out, that thing might tip over. Give me a hand. I try not to let that happen. I've been expecting it for weeks. Dave, I've always known you felt this way. And I'm not sorry. What is it, Dave? Is there someone else? No, there isn't anyone else. It's just that, well, my, my position, and it wouldn't be fair to tell you how much I love you, but perhaps someday well, things may be different. All right, Dave. I'll wait. I'm going dippy. I've got to find someone that can help me. It's more important than ever now. Oh, you've been playing chauffeur to Miss Warren again, huh? Yeah. What happened today? Well, we rode over to the lake and then we went canoeing. 
Guess it was too romantic for both of us. Before I knew it, I was holding her in my arms. And, well, I just couldn't tell her why I can't marry her. Well, she'll have to know someday. Yeah, but Jeff, not until I prove my innocence. Well, your chances on that are getting slimmer every day. You haven't found a single one of those witnesses. Your last hope is that fellow Tony Lynch. Yeah, and he's disappeared like everyone else. Uh, maybe not. I picked up a lead on him today. They say he used to work in this gasoline station. It's worth a try. I'll get right out there. Oh, here. Use my car. Thanks. And don't forget, when you're dealing with Tony Lynch, you're up against a tough egg. I've got a persuader here. Hey, listen, Dave, wait a minute. If you're caught with a gun, it'll be your finish. I know that. How should I know where he is? I get three dollars a week for this room, and he pays it, too. I don't know where it comes from, nor how. And I care less, as long as he hands it over to me. I don't ask him no questions, and he don't ask me none. And I don't see why anyone else should be asking him. So if you're sappy enough to sit around here for a couple of hours waiting for him, you can do it alone. I'm going to sleep. And it's a lucky thing for you I don't make you wait outside. Have you any idea where I can find a fellow by the name of Tony Lynch? Tony Lynch? What do you want with him? I have a little business deal I like to settle. You're playing with dynamite when you deal with him. I'd like to kick his head off. I understand he used to work for you. No. He used to shirt for me. And on top of that, he cleaned out my cash register when he beat it. Well, didn't you tell the police and have him arrested? No, not me. I don't want no trouble with that gang he runs with. About how long ago did he leave here? About three months. Can you tell me where I might find him? Or he's poisoned anybody. But if you must find him, there's a saloon down on Turner Street run by a fellow named Ed Davis. You might try that. Well, thanks. I'll go right down there. But don't tell him I told you. I won't. Hey, what'd that guy want? Uh, well, well, why, I mean, he was... Uh... Put them mitts down. This ain't no stick-up. Oh. Now answer my question. What'd he want? Well, uh, I mean, he was asking about someone. Who? Well, a fellow that used to work for me, a fellow named Tony Lynch. What'd you tell him about Tony Lynch? Well, uh, I told him he'd probably find him down at Davis's saloon. Oh. Uh, next time, keep your trap shut. Joe? Is Warren there? No, he ain't here tonight. What do you want with him? Tell me. That guy Tyler's on his way to Ed Davis' saloon. He's got a line on Tony Lynch. He has, eh? Well, don't waste any time. Jump over there quick and get Tony out of the way. See that they don't get together. If there's any trouble, let them both have it. Oh, no. Not Tyler. I got strict orders not to lay a finger on him unless the boss says so. I don't care what you say. I'm taking my orders from Warren. Now leave it to me. I know how to handle it. There you are, Tony. How are you picking them? Not bad. Who's that bird? I don't know. I never saw him before. What'll it be? A bottle of beer. He's here. Hold the phone. 
Say, Tony. Home. Thanks, Jim. Hello? Yeah, this is Tony. Oh, hello, Frank. No, I got too much dough bet on that fight already. Why, I'm a lucky. What do you think? Okay. Sit down. You're Tony Lynch, aren't you? What of it? I want to talk to you. About what? I've got a message for you. From who? A fellow by the name of Wiz Tyler. Remember him? Sit down, I'll tell you about it. You helped send Tyler to prison. You testified against him, didn't you? I thought you had a message for me. I have. Wiz wants to know who paid you to do it. Say, why should I tell you anything? I don't even know who you are. When you testified against Tyler, you knew he wasn't anywhere near that bank, didn't you? Say, what is this? Who are you? You want to know you're one of the guys who identified me in court. Now do you remember? Sit down, keep your hands on top of the table. Save yourself a lot of trouble by telling me. Who was it? Who paid you to railroad me to prison? If he thought I was only talking to you, he'd have me blasted full of holes. How do I know he won't find out? You're taking a bigger chance by not talking. All right. The shots came from the back door. Oh, Mr. Tyler. There's a man up there waiting for you. Who, Mr. Bennett? Yeah, uh, that buzzer that keeps flapping in and out, always asking questions. Tyler. Come up here, I want to talk to you. Hi, Mr. Bennett. Sit down. Been waiting long? Exactly three hours. And that's three hours too long for you to be out. Don't forget, that's against your parole orders. Unless you have a good excuse, I can send you back for this. Mr. Bennett, I forgot all about the time. I didn't realize how late it was. You know I always report to you regularly and that I don't want to do anything that might send me back. I don't see why a fellow like you takes such chances. Canceling your parole won't give me any pleasure. In fact, it's a mark against my record if you lose your freedom. No. I try to treat you a little differently from the average man reporting to me. I didn't think you were the type of fellow that would take advantage of my kindness. Mr. Bennett, I do appreciate your kindness. I'm sorry if I've disappointed you. If you'll overlook it this time, I promise you it'll never happen again. No guns. And you haven't been raking this in your favor. That's something you'll never have to worry about. All right. We'll forget it this time. But if it ever happens again, I won't be so easy. Good night, Tyler. Good night, Mr. Bennett. Go in there. Yes, we can. Don't do that. We'll get arrested. No, we won't. I put that sign in there myself. We'll go on through. Do you own this place? No, but I reserved it the other day with that sign. But don't ask so many questions. Go on.
hurry up and bring that case out of the car. What is all this? Never mind, just open that up. Your brother said not to waste any time. Said you were in a hurry. I was, but now you're here. Well, he said you wanted me to drive you to Elaine's. Well, can't a lady change her mind? We can go to Elaine's some other day. I think we'd better drive on. And spoil our little anniversary party? Oh, no, you don't. Anniversary? Of what? Of your black eye that you got defending a lady just four weeks ago today. Remember? I happen to be the lady. That's right. I happen to be the man. And that day, we had lemonade. So today, in celebration, we have lemonade. And I made it so you'd better like it. Well, if you're as good at that as you were in doctoring my eye, it ought to be perfect. So let me look at that eye. A good close look. Well, looks as good as new. Can you see out of it? I can see things I never could see before. Why, I can even see way out in the distance. But you can't see anything in front of your eyes. Oh, yes, I can. And what do you see? You. And that's all you see? Oh, Dave, can't you see anything else? Are you always going to be this blind? No, I'm not blind. This is just something I've been trying not to face. Julie, I loved you from the first day we met. And why didn't you tell me? Because I couldn't tell you without asking you to marry me, and that's impossible for us. Remember the day you said you'd wait? You meant it then, didn't you? Yes, Dave. And please have faith in me a little while longer. And let's not talk about it anymore. Now. Is that a promise? And now, shall we celebrate that anniversary? This ain't luck. I'm Sniffy Johnson. We was up to the big house together. I got out of my head of you. Don't you remember me? Sure. Hello, Sniffy. Hey, I heard you was paroled, but you was a sap for taking it. Served my full time every day of it. Now they got nothing on me. You know I've been on the lookout for you ever since. Why? Well, I can do you a good turn. Now, you're the kind of a guy who can take it and keep your mouth shut. How's about throwing in with me, being my partner? In what? We'd start the sweetest job in town. Furs. Yeah, furs. Worth a fortune and as easy as cracking the baby's bank. Not me, Snuffy. I don't go in for that kind of stuff. Oh, don't be a piker. You're out on parole, ain't you? What chance you got? Now listen, whiz. Cut out the whiz. Okay, Tyler. But it was sure tough the way you got framed into the clink. What do you know about that? I figured that'd make your ears stick up. How do you know I was framed? Because I was working for the fellow that done it. I know all about it. Who was the guy? Oh, no. That's valuable information. I don't give that stuff away. Well, I haven't got any dough, Sniffy. Who said anything about dough? Well, what do you want, then? Well, I could use your help on that little fur job. You know I can't get mixed up in anything like that when I'm out on parole. Then what are you doing in this dump? Looking for somebody that knows who framed me. Well, you found him. Now, how's about it? Do we work together? Sniffy, I can't. If I'm nabbed, I, I have to go back for six years. Sure. Sure, pal. You can't take no chances. You'd better just stew on parole. Oh, come on. Don't hold out. Be regular. Give me the lowdown. Oh, forget it, and let's have a little drink. Hey. A couple of drinks. Double make them stiff. Bring the bottle. How are you talking? Hello, Warren. This is Pete talking. Tyler got together with a guy at Jack's. Sure, I know him. Snippy Johnson. Yeah, I'll trail him. Okay. You know something, Tyler? When I get like this, always get into trouble. 
I'd like to grab a train out of here tonight and disappear. And wind up in South America or someplace. Gone for years. Far away from the cops, that's me. Sniffy, you know that fur job you were talking about? Could we do it without being nabbed? Nope. I get more sense when I'm drinking. I'm afraid of it now. It's too much of a chance. Maybe together we could get away with it. No, forget it. Call up and see when the train leaves for San, uh, San for Frisco. Let's get out of here. I don't want to get out of here. Go away and let me alone. I want to get some sleep. Come on, Sniffy. I'll take care of you. Where do you live? Do you know whether he was in his room at all last night? How oh, should I know? I have other things to do besides watching him. Have you been in his room this morning? No, I didn't get around to it. Well, let's take a look at it. Mm -hmm. Open this door. When were you in this room last? When I cleaned it up. That was yesterday? Uh-huh. Has he been back since? What right have you digging in his stuff? Oh, police? No, parole officer. I'll be back here, in case he does return. What are you doing here? And who are you? You'll remember who I am when you snap out of it. Oh, Tyler. How'd you get here at my hangout? Brought you home last night. You passed out. You're crazy. I never passed out in my life. I wouldn't take any more of that now, Sniffy. Mind your own business, will you? Get out of here. Beat it. No, I'm sticking with you. We're partners. Whatever gave you that idea? You did, last night. We made a deal. I don't know what you're talking about. You said you knew who framed me. And if I threw in with you, you'd tell me. Now, what about it, Sniffy? No, I changed my mind. I don't like you. You're one of those fresh guys that think you know it all. Nobody can tell you anything. I don't work with phonies like you, not ever. And I don't want you hanging around here. About time you arrived, that parole officer's been following here every minute. He's on his way over here now. Well, what does he want to see me about? This was Tyler's day to report, and he didn't do it. You didn't tell him where Tyler is, did you? No, but this is our chance to get rid of him for a long time. How? By tipping the parole officer to pick him up at Sniffy's. Yes, and suppose you explain how we know that. Why not hang Tony Lynch's murder on him? Try to remember that we don't know anything about that. Unless you want to get wrapped up in it. Yes? Mr. Bennett to see you. Send him in. I'll do the talking. Come in, Mr. Bennett. There you're looking for Tyler. Yes. This was a day to report, and I can't find him. I'm sorry to hear that, but I can't help you. He didn't show up here, either. He wasn't home last night. I'm afraid this cancels his parole. I'll have to send him back. Oh, wait a minute, Mr. Bennett. I, I wouldn't do that. It may not be the boy's fault. Wait till you hear his excuse. 
There's no excuse for a parole man having a gun. I found this in his room. Oh, that's too bad. I, I can hardly believe it. I had a lot of faith in that boy. Russell and I thought the world of him. I thought he was headed for trouble when he yapped about being innocent. Always trying to hang that crime of his on somebody else. I want to thank you for what you tried to do. I'm sorry you disappointed all of us. In case you get a line on him, I'd appreciate you letting me know. We sure will. I still think you ought to report. But I don't dare show up. I've already violated parole by not reporting today. Probably out looking for me now. Going on this job tonight means I can clear myself. Yeah, and being caught and with Sniffy will make you a real criminal. But maybe I won't get caught. Anyway, it's the last chance I'll ever get to clear myself. And if I go with him, he'll have to tell me who framed me. But Dave, that's committing a crime just as bad as the one you were sent up for. But I'm not going to take any furs. I'm just going along. No, I'll try to explain that to the cops. I'll have to take that risk. It's the only way. Well, you might as well forget about it because I'm not going to let you go. Oh, no, Jeff, don't, don't do that. I mean, if you were ever a friend of mine, don't try to stop me now. That's why I'm doing it, because I am a friend of yours. Well, I'm going anyway. Oh, Dave, don't do that! Keep a lookout for the watchman. Hey, what started that? I don't know. Give me that gun. That's enough, Sniffy. Why, you... What's the matter with you? Now tell me the name of that guy. Well, what guy are you talking about? Quit stalling the guy to frame me. Well, let's get this stuff out of here first. Not till you tell me. Why, you fool, if we're caught in here, you'll go to jail. So will you, so you better tell me and tell me quick. I can always turn you up for this job. All right. The guy you're working for, Gregory Warren. The lion. Why should he do that? Because he had a lot of bets on a football game and he couldn't win with you playing. Well, then who did the back sticker? Joe Russell. Why, him and Warren own all the rackets in this town. Now, come on, let's get out of here. Leave that stuff where it is. Put these spurs in Come on, get out of here! I know who he is. I'm stopped dead in my tracks. I can't do anything about it. If I turn Warren up for what he is, what's that going to do to his sister? Listen, you've got your own life to live. Go to this guy Warren and smack it to him, and I'll blast him all over the front page. No, then she'd know. Well, then go to her. If she's in love with you, maybe she'll help. What? Turn against her own brother? Not a chance. Well, you better do something before the parole officer gets a hold of you. He isn't going to catch up with me. Hey, you don't mean you'd run out with this hanging over you just to protect a mug like Warren. You're missing the point. It's Julie, her brother means everything to her. Yeah, she means everything to you. Oh, I'm not going to wreck her life just to clean myself up. Well, there's only one thing to do. I'll go to her and I'll tell her who I am and what I am and that'll end it. So long, Jeff. Thanks for everything.
Dave. What in the world happened? What are you doing here at this time of night? I came over to say goodbye. I'm going away. Tonight? Yes, I have to. I have to get away from a parole officer. Now, what on earth would a parole officer want with you? Send me back to prison. Julie, I'm Wes Tyler. Football player who was convicted for robbing a bank. That ought to explain a lot of things to you. Now you see why I couldn't ask you to marry me. I couldn't with a record like that hanging over my head. Oh, Dave, I don't believe it. I just can't believe you could do a thing like that. Oh, you couldn't. I didn't. The jury convicted me. They believed I did it. Oh, but I know you didn't. Thanks, Julie, but that doesn't clear me. Ever since I was paroled, I've been looking for the men who testified against me, and now I'm at the end of my rope. Oh, Dave, it's not like you to give up. Why, it would look as if you were guilty to leave now. Oh, running away won't do any good. I can't stay here either. It's too late for that. I'll get my brother to help you. He'll do anything I ask him. Can't let him help me. But he will, dear, and he can. He'll do anything for me. All I have to do is ask him. I don't want you to do that. I don't want him to help me. What if I tell him how much we love each other? No, Julie. Hello. Oh, it's you, Greg. Is Tyler there with you? Well, put him on the phone. I want to talk to him. But, Greg, there's something I want to talk to you about first. Never mind about that. It can wait. Put Tyler on. Greg, what's wrong? He wants to talk to you. Yes? What are you doing in my house? I, uh, I thought I might find you here. Well, get out of there and get to the office. And don't lose any time about it. All right, I'll be right there. He wants me at the office. Well, what could have happened? It's after midnight. What does he want? I'll find out. And you will ask him to help you? No, Julie. Then you're really going away? Yes. Oh, Dave. Goodbye, Julie. What's all a rush, Warren? You're in a tight spot, Tyler. Well, you and your gorilla Russell ought to know. Well, what do you think you're going to do about it? Come down off your horse, Tyler. I know what we're going to do about it. Yeah, but this time it won't be so easy. Everything's out in the open now. If I'm grabbed before I get out of town, you better get six other men to pin that bank job on Russell. Sending Russell up won't help you now. That fur job that you pulled tonight got you in too deep. Steffi is a bad egg. Oh, so you know that too. Well, whoever you had trailing me didn't find out what Sniffy said about you and why you railroaded me. And as long as you have so much influence, Mr. Warren, I'll leave it to you to square my record while I'm missing. Think that over. Good night. You're not going out the door, Tyler. You're going out the window. Ten floors. Are you gonna let that monkey walk loose where he can spill his mouth? You know he's not only got me for the stick-up, but he's got you for framing it. When the cops pick him up, he'll squawk. Are you gonna let me handle him now? Yeah. You take care of him. Now you've come to your senses. Here's where he lives.
Tyler. Is this what you're looking for? Sit down. Is this your gun? Yes. You knew that uh, possession of firearms was a parole violation? Yes. What are you packing for? Going away. You knew that was a violation too, didn't you? Yes. Tyler, I'll have to take you back. Go right on packing. What are you doing up this late, Freckles? Waiting for you. I just have to talk to you. Why, you're all excited. Come on, that isn't like you. Calm down now. Let's talk this over. Find out what it's all about, huh? It's about Dave. Dave? You mean Tyler? Yes. Well, what's Tyler got to do with you? Oh, Greg, tonight he told me everything. About being in prison and not being able to clear himself. Now he's going away. He'll be caught and they'll send him back to prison. Did he tell you anything else about his trouble? That he's innocent and can't prove it. Is that all he told you? And he wouldn't let you help him. Oh, but Greg, you must. You must for me. But why? Because I'm in love with him. And he loves me. Oh, Julie. That's impossible. You'll have to forget him. No, I'm going to him wherever he is. I'm going to marry him. And you're that much in love with Tyler? Oh, yes, Greg. More than I can ever tell you. When did this start? That first day you sent him to drive me. He should never have let this happen. He knew his position. He tried to avoid it. It wasn't his fault. Julie, are you certain, absolutely certain, that you love him enough to marry him? Oh, yes, Greg. You must believe me. I believe you. That explains a lot. Now I know why he was getting out. Then you will help him. You won't let him go away. Yes, Julie, for you. Oh, then hurry, Greg, before he leaves. There's just one chance in a million that it isn't too late. Julie, you're not making any mistake about Tyler. He's the right sort of fellow. It'll be all right. Come on, Joe. Never mind about Tyler. Let him alone. Have you gone crazy? You heard me. It's canceled. I've changed my mind. Nothing stopping me. That monkey's not gonna squeal on me. Never mind about that. I'll take care of him. Yeah, I left it to you before. You see where that got us? This time I'm not making that mistake. Go and get in the car. I'm giving orders. And I'm through taking them. Joe, don't try that. Russell. I wonder who shot him. Guess you can prove I didn't do it. Did you get the license number on that car? Didn't you? No. Come on, I have to phone the police. Dave, I'm glad to see you. You're looking good. And the warden tells me you're making it all right. Yeah, I guess I'll make it all right. Only got five years and ten months and eleven days. Have you seen Julie? Yeah, I saw her yesterday. How is she? Well, you know, she misses you a lot and her brother dying and everything. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, pretty tough. Did anybody wonder why the shooting took place in front of my house? Yeah, sure, it all came off. Did Julie find out about her brother? Say, Warden, is there any place here we can talk privately? Yeah, certainly. Go right in there. 
Thanks. Dave. I didn't want you to see me here, Julie. My brother told me everything before he died. He asked me to come here. Oh, Dave, I'm never going to leave you again. But, Julie, it'll be years before I get out. No, dear. Minutes. I've been to the governor with a letter signed by Greg. Yes, clearing you of everything. And then the governor signed this. <laughs> 